Hello everyone, Lawrence here. Now, some time ago, the guys from AVM Fritz sent me this router. This is the Fritz Box 7590. It's like their flagship modem, router, Wi-Fi access point, all that sort of stuff. And while I have had a lot of other routers, in the meantime, I've always been using this one as like my go-to router, especially because it also came with this uh, Wi-Fi extender that I would use on a different floor and everything was awesome. Now, the thing is though, I also have some new stuff here. So because I really liked the 7590, I just said yes straight away when the guys from AVM asked me if I wanted to test the 7530. Effectively, they're pretty much the same thing. The only difference is this one's way smaller and it's a lot more affordable as well. So other than that, the feature set is pretty similar. That means that in this video, I will not go into the entire web GUI thing um, and talk to you about all the settings. I'll just do like a short uh, cut down version of that. First up though, let's do a quick physical overview of just the 7530. And then I'll also talk about this power line with Wi-Fi set that I actually really liked. So first up, what you see with the 7530 is it's exactly the same as the big guy. So if you have DSL internet, so like phone line internet, this can also be your modem. And it's actually why most people get this as a modem. I have her live in Belgium. I have Telenet as my ISP. That's a cable based ISP and I am forced to use their modem. Even though that's illegal, I'm forced to use their modem. Um, so I can't use the modem capabilities of this one. I also haven't been testing the phone capabilities because it can also do DECT phone um, stuff. Haven't been able to test that as well because again of my ISP. So on the front then are just some buttons. So there's a toggle to turn on the Wi-Fi or turn off the Wi-Fi could be handy in some cases. There's of course a toggle for the DECT phone stuff, along with a WPS connector, which you'll actually need if you want to use the mesh stuff that I'll talk about in just a second. Now, what's really nice is this one still has mounts for screws, so you can hang it on a wall. A lot of new big modems routers don't have that anymore, so awesome that that's included. There's a single USB 3.0 port on the side, so you can use this thing as a NAS with an external hard drive, for example. It actually works really well, as I'll talk about in a bit. And the phone, phone lines are here as well. Then on the back is the DSL input, along with the phone line, and then, as you can see, four Ethernet ports there as well. Everything's gigabit, both LAN and WAN, so if you want to use multiple ones of these in a mesh network, you can do that, it'll work at gigabit speeds, which is really awesome. And then there's of course also the jack for the power adapter. Now, styling wise with the 7530, what do I think of it? Well, it is effectively a smaller version of this guy, uh, but I kind of like it. It's not as in your face uh, as a lot of the new stuff is. So a lot of new routers are like, with a bunch of external antennas, they look like spiders or alien stuff or whatever. It's all super aggressive. This is, you know, kind of something you can put away and no one will notice that it's there, which for 99% of people is probably the preferable option. So then when it comes to setting up your Fritz box, you can usually have your ISP do it for you. However, uh, in my case, I just set it up myself because it's super easy. You just connect your computer to it, either with a wire or wirelessly. The standard SSID and password is on the back, so it's super easy to set up. And you fill in some parameters um, that are, again, really easy to do, and you're online. It's really that simple. It's actually something that I really like with the Fritzbox stuff. Um, it's incredibly easy to set up, but at the same time, it's not limiting. Again, I'm not gonna go into everything, but what I really like, for example, is you can control this thing externally, so from wherever in the world you want to, you can log in to your router, super easy, uh, especially combined with the wake on LAN feature. So if a computer is like turned off, you can wake it up. The main selling points um, with the new stuff here is the, the mesh, uh, and that's where all the other stuff comes in as well. So all the Fritzbox stuff, if you just update it to the latest firmware, which it'll actually do automatically, you can start plugging in a lot of other stuff. So the way I have my home setup here is this is my main uh, router. This one is connected to this one. It's also connected to um, this guy over here. No, this guy over here. Uh, and then this is power lining to this guy. This is a Wi-Fi access point. These are two Wi-Fi access points. And then I have a 
fourth Wi-Fi access point, and everything works in a mesh. Now, what that means is there is one SSID and your device, phone, tablet, laptop, whatever, will connect to whichever one is nearby and therefore give you the best speed. Two weeks before I got this one, I actually had to help out my girlfriend whose Wi-Fi was broken, as they call it. And what turned out is she had three different um, access points and they were all interfering with each other, all different names. She had to manually switch between them. It's a nightmare. Uh, with the Fritzbox stuff, you know, you get that mesh functionality and everything will happen automatically. So that's really awesome. I guess though, when we're talking about Wi-Fi, the main thing is speed. Now, speed with Wi-Fi is always a bit of a difficult one. Um, usually you'll be limited to your ISP. Um, you know, if you only pay for 40 megabits of downstream, you're not gonna get 80 by upgrading to a better router, for example. So I test everything with SSD storage and I do in-network testing. So there are some numbers on your screen right now. As you can see, the 7530 is not the fastest that I've ever tested, but it is plenty fast for most usage, no matter what the range is. Obviously, just some synthetic performance numbers don't really matter all that much. Um, in real life, what's more important is access time and stability. Now, I'll be honest with you guys, I haven't had a single issue with these whatsoever as soon as I set them up. So I haven't had my Wi-Fi drop out, I haven't had slow response times or any of that. So it's been a really good experience using the 7530. Has it all been perfect though? Well, in a way, yes, but in a way, no. So what I found really weird was that once I connected a mesh network between these two and these two, one of them would drop away from the mesh, but it would still work. It's just the visualization in the web interface kind of changes and these were no longer indicated as mesh even though they kind of were. So that was really weird. But you know, it's not something you actually notice in use, it's just something that I noticed. That was actually the only um, small issue that I had with you know the whole Fritzbox setup that I'm using here, which is quite a complicated one with five devices. Anyway, massive thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in a next video, whenever that happens to be.